Hello everyone. I'm Arpadeep Roy. I'm an undergrad student at the Department of English in Maharaja Monindra Chandra College under the University of Calcutta. Uh, presently, I'm in the fourth semester of this academic program. Our course uh, not just allows us to appreciate writers and poets, but in uh, some ways it helps us brush up our skills to be writers and poets. So our very own uh, Professor Ma'am Shomri Dauni Ganguly has been dealing with creative writing and translation studies with us for over the last two semesters and uh, over these semesters Professor Chitra Agarwal, Dr. Hoimunti Sinha, Dr. Naina De have been extensively tutoring us over Shakespeare. Professor Modhushri Mukherjee has been teaching us Coleridge while uh, Professor Vijit Boshak has been teaching us Lewis Carroll. So our course basically focuses on British poets and writers, but it uh, also has special papers on Indian and American writers as well. The language I speak becomes mine. It is half English, half Indian. Funny perhaps, but it is honest. These immortal lines by Kamala Das from her poem, An Introduction, sums up the dilemma of readers and writers of English literature in India. As an individual who pursues a course in English and uh, being born in a world where Dhuti Punjabi feels outdated and the suits and shirts are the new cool, this is a scene and emotion I can really relate to. There are uh, nearly 21 British poets in our syllabus, Chaucer, Shakespeare, the Metaphysical, Spencer, Milton, uh, Pope, Samuel Johnson, the Romantics, the Victorians, Eats, Owen, Eliot, the uh, usual suspects who are considered to be uh, the classics in the world of British poetry. These poets transport readers uh, to a world very different from ours, uh, yet often strangely similar a world of love, mysticism, intrigues, a world filled with sentiments and romanticism and sexuality. We were introduced to American poetry um, uh, with Whitman, Robert Frost, Sylvia Plath, Langston Hughes, Edgar Allan Poe and Emily Dickinson. The American writers prominently talked about forming new identities, standing against racism and the idea of building a new nation. The world of Indian poetry is something that uh, we could easily identify. Our syllabus included Indian English poets such as Henry de Rosio, Jayanto Mahapatro, Toru Dotto, A.K. Ramanujan, Kamala Das, uh, Nizam Ezekiel, Eunice D'Souza, Ravindranath Tagore, G.M. Mukti Bodh, and Amrita Pritam. These writers share with me and uh, in turn with every other person who identifies as Indian, possibly the same spirit. As an Indian, a reader relates more to the idea of the waves of the holy Ganges uh, swaying of the feet uh, than the exquisite Thames uh, doing it the humming of the folk tunes of the Shantal tribes and the tapping of the feet to bowl music often speaks to us louder than the nightingale does. Indian English poetry deals with a vast range of subjects such as myths and legends of the fairies and devils, the idea of women breaking free from the shackles of patriarchal society, nationalism, a search for freedom, a new language and culture in a 70-ish year old democracy. The lines from Wordsworth poignantly speaks of nature in all its bloom and glory, but somehow a typical Indian road isn't blessed with daffodils. Reading English poets uh, therefore becomes all the more relevant to someone who pursues the aforementioned discipline of studies. While African Americans uh, talk about their right to live, work with dignity, pointing out American history of racism, Indian poets talk about making the world a better place for the Dalit people, challenging the history of India's casteism and the queer people who until 2018 were legally charged 
and are still often misconstrued. No matter how relevant or perfect British or American poetry feels, we as students often lack a sense of context. All those lines of poetry somehow stands miles away from contextual realities. Uh, therefore, even though the likes of Shakespeare and Chaucer and Poe, uh, we will always remain as uh, they will remain as the guiding stars in the history of English literature. Uh, but uh, I'm glad that as students we get to read Tagore or Toru Dotto. Indian English poetry is a world in itself. We have explored some of that world. There is so much more to explore. Today, I shall be reading to you a poem by one of India's most prominent contemporary queer poet, Akhil Katyal, titled For Someone Who Will Read This 500 Years From Now, a poem published in the anthology of poems by Katyal called Like Blood on the Bitten Tongue. How are you? I'm sure a lot has changed between my time and yours, but we are not very different. You have only one thing on me, hindsight. I have all these questions for you. Do cars fly now? Uh, is Mumbai still standing by the sea? How do you folks manage to live without ozone? Have the aliens come yet? Who is still remembered from my century? How long did India and Pakistan last? Uh, how, when did Kashmir become free? It must be surprising for you, uh, looking at our time, our lives must seem so strange to you, our wars may seem so little, our toilets for men and women must make you laugh, our cutting down of trees would be lifted as uh, one of your early causes, our poetry in which uh, the moon is still a thing far away must make you wonder, both for that moon and for poetry. You must be baffled that uh, we couldn't even imagine the things you now take for granted. But uh, let that be. Uh, would you do me a favor for uh, old time sakes? Uh, would you go to Humayun's tomb in uh, what we used to call Delhi? And uh, just as you're climbing the front stairs uh, near the fourth step, I have cut into the stone wall to your left, Akhil loves Rohit. Will you go and look at it? Make sure it's still there. Thank you folks. That's been my time. Stay happy and healthy. Bye-bye.